Welcome back to another rebuild today here on the channel and in today's video we are going to be doing another historic throwback rebuild. Now this throwback rebuild is another what if and we're going to see what if the Philadelphia 76ers didn't make the mistake that they did in the 2017 draft and what if they had drafted Jason Tatum over Markel Fultz. Now I want to make it clear that Markel Fultz was clearly the right pick at number one. He was an unbelievable talent at Washington in college and he was clearly the player that was always going to go first overall. If you guys remember back to that draft lottery, the Celtics actually won that draft lottery and then Danny Ainge made the trade with the 76ers to move from one down to three and as he says anyways, he still got the player he wanted in Jason Tatum. So hypothetically, if that trade never happened, maybe the Sixers take Tatum. I don't know if they actually would or not, but we're just going to see what would have happened if they had ended up making the right pick. Markel Fultz has definitely bounced back after a shaky start to his career, but Jason Tatum just came in fourth in MVP voting. I mean, it's night and day between the two players. So we're going to shake some things up a little bit today. Jason Tatum Tends to do pretty well against the 76ers, but today let's see if he actually ended up as a 76er. And if you guys have any other ideas for some of these what-if little historic throwback scenarios, let me know them all down below in the comment section. You guys had a ton on the one I did a couple days ago with Kobe and the Hornets. And honestly, I do want to get to a bunch of those, so comment them down below here as well. And as always, if you guys have any other video ideas, let me know those as well. But uh, yeah, man, this would be absolutely crazy. My Celtics. My franchise, my team, would probably not be anywhere near where they are today if the Celtics had ended up taking Markel Fultz first overall. So crazy to look back and think about the what-if possibilities is what it is, man. Let's get into this one and rewrite NBA history. We are here at the start of the 2017-2018 NBA season. This is obviously both Fultz and Tatum's rookie year. And if I didn't make it clear enough in the intro, this is just going to be a Sixers rebuild. We're not going to do the Celtics version of this. Maybe we can at some point. But let's go over this roster. Also show you all the rosters in the league. I don't think it's 100% accurate, but I believe it's about as close as we're going to get right now. So, Joel Embiid, 89 overall, 23 years old. He's obviously not the dominant force MVP winner that he is today, but he definitely still has that potential and he's definitely still a really good player. That's awesome to see. We have Ben Simmons here who's 20 years old at this time. He's uh, technically not played yet because he was injured his rookie season, so rookie of the year Ben Simmons. But he's a competent basketball player who has not lost his confidence yet. We can't say those two things right now with Ben Simmons. Uh, we have Tatum here. I'm deciding whether I want to play him at the three or the four. We will see, but he's an 80 overall. He's 19 years old, much like he is right now. I'm just kidding. Uh, Ersan Ilyasova in here, who was a good stretch four for the Sixers. When I think back to all those older playoff series that my Celtics and the 76ers have had, this dude used to piss me off from time to time. Uh, we have J.J. Redick here, three-point sniper, now podcast host and on ESPN from time to time. You got Rocco here, who in his day was pretty good, I will say. Uh, Jared Bayless, Rashawn Holmes, T.J. McConnell, Amir Johnson, another Celtics legend. Uh, Jaleel Okafor, who I'm not going to lie to you guys, I thought this dude was going to be really, really good. It looks like they just edited somebody because obviously Jaleel Okafor was not in the league at this point, but... He probably just didn't have like a player model in here. I don't know. Uh, Marco Bellinelli, Nick Stauskas, TLC, Furkan, Korkmaz, or Furkan, Korkmaz, whatever his name is. But this is an interesting 76ers roster. I don't know if we're right at the championship level of contention because we have to remember LeBron is still in the East. Those Cavs are not going to be very fun to go up and play against. So just scrolling through, feel free to pause if you guys want to take a look at any of these rosters. If you guys see anything that looks insanely wrong, I believe Isaiah Thomas should be here. I'm not sure if that's 100. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's not. It doesn't matter. I mean, not everything is going to be 100% accurate with this roster. Also, you can see right here, Markel Fultz here with the Celtics listed as a shooting guard. I mean, it makes sense. Maybe you'll get him some minutes next to Kyrie. Who knows? Uh, here's a look at the Clippers, Grizzlies. I mean, again, feel free to pause at any point in time go over these rosters. But I will say, like, thinking back, I don't know. They have IT and the Lakers. I don't know. Maybe they had the trade go through already that LeBron made at the deadline or whatever it was. Um, but it's crazy to think back to this time, man. You still got Dirk here. This was such a fun era in the NBA for me. It, it really was. I enjoyed basketball a ton at this point. Not that I don't, but, like, it was just a different vibe. It really was at this point in time. And obviously, there's still the very, very big super team here in Golden State. So, We'll see what ends up happening. Maybe we can meet up with them in the finals. I also don't know why the Hornets are listed last. It's weird. It's like not in alphabetical order. I don't know. But LeBron, yeah, 32 years old, 99 overall. It's going to be a pain in the ass. So we might make a few trades. Let's see what we can find. Our first trade is going to be coming with the Utah Jazz. We're going to be sending them Jared Bayless, Marco Bellinelli, and a future second round pick. And we're going to be picking up Ricky Rubio. 
tremendous facilitator of the basketball. I don't mind having him start at point guard instead of Ben Simmons. We'll just move Simmons to the four. Honestly, it definitely can't hurt. I don't really need Ben Simmons out on an island or anything like that. So Ricky Rubio is going to come in here. He's going to be my new point guard. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with that first trade. It feels like a pretty big upgrade. We're doing this deal here with the Orlando Magic. We're sending them Nick Stauskas, Angela Okafor for Evan Fournier and Terrence Ross. I'm not really sure why Stauskas has three stars in trade value. It's probably obviously not 100% accurate, but Evan Fournier is going to come in. I'm probably still going to have J.J. Redick start, but I think Fournier will be a really good piece off the bench. Then we also do acquire Terrence Ross. In terms of what I want to do with him, we do have Rocco here, who I definitely wouldn't mind keeping in the backup position here. I don't have a problem with Terrence Ross, but... I just, I just don't think we really need him. I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen at this point. And honestly, if we can find a trade and get a draft pick, I'm definitely not opposed. Also, maybe could find a new backup point guard, but I like TJ McConnell. Uh, but Terrence Ross is not a bad player. He definitely could be helpful to this team. But at this point in time, I'm comfortable. What the hell? How is this a possibility? I'm not going to make that trade. It feels a little too cheesy. What the hell? Interesting trades we're getting offered to ourselves today. Um, okay, anything else here that, you know, at first jump, I don't want to take Manu away from the Spurs. That just, it feels wrong. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel like something I should do. I don't really want to help the Warriors right now, but honestly, because Batum's here. Why are these trade offers coming in that are honestly really, really nice right now? I don't really know. Um, all right, you know what? He's on a multi-year deal, so he can just stay on the bench. But maybe we'll trade him in the offseason. So let's go ahead and set the rotation. And it is now time to start simming year one for us here in Philadelphia. We went ahead and made some changes. This is looking like a really, really talented team. Now, are we going to be able to compete with LeBron? I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but we do have a really competent team. And I expect us to be a top four seed here in the East. So it's going to be Ricky Rubio, JJ Redick, Jason Tatum, Ben Simmons, who also goes up three overalls if he moving to power forward. Funny how that happens. I doubt it will, but it would be kind of comical if his overall just started going down at some point. Kind of like how he's like an 80 overall in 2K right now, or a 78, whatever he is. That would be kind of funny. Uh, we have Joel Embiid here at the center spot. No surprise there. The bench unit's actually pretty decent. It's Evan Fournier, Ersan Ilyasova, Robert Covington, TJ McConnell, and Rashawn Holmes. I think, again, this is a top four seed in the East. Let's find out. I'll see you guys in the end of year one. We go 59-23 and 23 in our first season here in Philadelphia in Russell Westbrook, winning MVP still in OKC. I miss Prime Russ, man. Not that he's like a dog shit player. I think he still gets overhated on right now. But, man, oh, man, this version of Russell Westbrook was just so fun. Uh, Simmons ends up winning Rookie of the Year, beating out Jason Tatum. It's not often you can say that, you know, you have guys from two different draft classes competing for one Rookie of the Year award. But, nonetheless... Very impressive season from Simmons, 17 points, 9.5 boards, 7 assists. Awesome to see. Jabari Parker, 6th man of the year. A healthy Jabari Parker is a really big what if for me, man. I wish. Uh, Rudy Gobert, defensive player of the year. Those Jazz uniforms are definitely not up to date. Emmanuel Moutier, most improved. He was what? 7th? Yeah, 7th overall pick back in the 2015 draft. And Ty Lue winning coach of the year. Do they have like the Ty Lue image from just because of the braids? That's awesome. Love to see it. Uh, 67 and 15 on the year as the Cavs do take the one seat over there in the East. So obviously there's no play-in right now. That um, didn't exist at this point in time. So one through eight is one through eight. and does not change. Uh, we do go, as I mentioned, 59 and 23, which is good enough for the two seed here in the Eastern Conference. And uh, we're going to be taking on the New York Knicks in round one. So let's see what ends up happening here. Here's a full look at the standings right now. Uh, we have Embiid, Simmons, Redick, Fournier, Rubio, Tatum. Decent rookie season. I mean, I'd like to see some more scoring. But obviously, 40% from three is pretty solid. He's basically 49% from the field. I can live with that for a rookie campaign. Embiid led us in boards and assists. Ricky Rubio at 10 a game. That's kind of the exact reason we went out and got him. So, us and the New York Knicks here in round one. Here's a look at their team. Jarrett Jack, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dougie McDermott, Malik Beasley, and Christoph Porzingis. This was a fun era for Chris Dapps, Porzingis in New York. Um, I just don't think they stand a chance, to be honest. I think we're just too good. We end up winning in five. And the Hornets take the three seed. This is still Kemba Walker. They have Batum, Jeremy Lamb, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, Dwight Howard here. Michael Carter-Williams, former Rookie of the Year. Who's Rookie there, right? Am I losing my mind? I am not, right? Oh, I thought he was. I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my shit. I might be, honestly. Uh, okay, we're up 2-0 against the Hornets right now. Again, I don't know how they're really a three seed. They're good, but they're not great. And surprise, surprise, we're taking on LeBron and the Cavs. George Hill, J.R. Smith, LeBron, Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson. They got Jay Crowder, Amon Shumpert, Rodney Hood, Larry Nance Jr. Very good team. Obviously, any team with LeBron is going to be incredible. Uh, we are up 2-1 right now. We go up 3-1. Okay. Okay. Okay, going to game seven. Okay, we did not blow the 3-0 lead. And we're going to be taking on James Harden 
and the Houston Rockets here in the NBA Finals. Chris Paul, James Harden, exciting backcourt. It really didn't pan out. You got Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson. That's a name I haven't heard in a minute. You got a young Clint Capella here, Trevor Ariza, P.J. Tucker, Fesses Azili. Oh, my God. This is just awesome. This is funny to see. It really is. We're down 3-0 right now. That's uh, not exactly ideal. And we're going to a Game 7. Wow. Okay. That might actually be a little bit surprising, to say the least. No way they blow a 3-0 lead, right? I mean, is it possible? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. James Harden and Chris Paul got that close to rings, and they ended up blowing it. That's insane. We'll get a couple shots up. Who knows if we'll be back here. LeBron's still in the East. So, uh, yeah, let's hop in and get some gameplay. We're going to win the championship. All right, so we're here on our home floor in Game 7, and we are about to close out the Houston Rockets after they were up 3-0 against us. I mean, I kind of do feel bad. But it's also kind of funny, I can't even lie, Rubio just gets the easy-ass layup to go. He has 17-5 and 13 on the night. I'm very happy I went ahead and made the trade for him to start this video. Man, that sucks though. Harden and CP3 came that close to a ring. I mean, it, literally, you cannot get any closer than one game away. And they blew the 3-0 lead. I mean, that's just that sucks to see. I will say, I know the rumors started coming out. And I'm actually recording this on Thursday, not Friday. So I don't know if there's been any developments on it yet. But obviously... The, the Chris Paul rumors that he was going to get released, I uh, I don't know. I mean, Chris Haynes said he straight out got released, and then Shams and Woj came back and said, nope, hold on, wait a minute. And so they're doing a bunch of different things right now. They're considering all options, including trading. I don't know why I'm doing that, but what the hell, why not? Oh, my God. Um, including all things. They could trade him. They could stretch the contract and release him, whatever it may be. Who knows? But I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up staying with the Suns. If not, I think it's probably one of the L.A. teams and again, I know some Lakers fans already, I saw a lot of them on Twitter being like, fuck no, we do not need to go back to having a bunch of old players on our team. And I do get that. Um, for me, though, I think it would be fun to see Chris Paul with the Lakers. Him with LeBron, obviously good friends. Get Anthony Davis involved as well. Could be another facilitator for him. I mean, hell, I would take Chris Paul over D'Angelo Russell as my starting point guard right now. That's really what I'm trying to say. And then the other option could be him going back to the Clippers. I don't see that as much because I honestly do believe that Russell Westbrook will end up back there. I mean, maybe you can bring in both of them. One start, one come off the bench. Who, who the hell knows, honestly. But I don't know. I think there's options. And what I'm trying to say is I hope he ends up you know, finding a team that is going to get a ring. Because as funny as the memes are, I feel like he's just he's one of the best point guards in NBA history. And I think sometimes people forget that. And I really do want him to go ahead and get a ring at some point. Maybe he signs with my Celtics we go out and get a ring. Kind of kills two birds with one stone with me. I get what I want times two. Um, all right, we're going to do one final offensive possession here. Um, I mean, I know this is like the kind of the Tatum rebuild, but I mean, it's really not. Um, you know, screw it. Let's just, let's give it to Ben Simmons. Let's see what a prime Ben Simmons can do right now. He has eight, five, and nine on the night. Uh, and Bean, pick. All right, Simmons down to the rim. Going to just throw it up and wow, somehow it goes in. All right, I'll see you guys with whoever wins finals MVP. We come back down from 3-0 and end up winning a championship in year one. And Ben Simmons is your finals MVP. Those are words that will never come out of my mouth again, most likely. But 17.5 points, 8.5 rebounds, 9 assists, 2.5 steals a game. Wow. What if, man? Really, what if? All right, so it is offseason number one time. Obviously, this is a three-year rebuild, so we're going to be going through two of these total. Um, in terms of chain, I mean, we can look at player retirements. Oh, my God, I forgot. This is cool. Wait, no. Wasn't Kobe's final year at the end of 2016, 2017? I thought it was. Maybe Was it? I don't know. I could be off. Also, this is 59 overall. Come on, 2K. What are we doing? Uh, Hall of Fame inductees, Kobe. No surprise there whatsoever. Jersey. Get... Did the Lakers not retire Jer Kobe's jersey? I don't know. Um, all right, cool. So just a couple things. Oh, let's see what these rules are. All-star captains, and I'll choose the player. Oh, so that is an actual change. Shot clock resets the part. Yes, that is a good change. So basically what that changes is instead of, say, what we were just playing. Say we were playing and Ben Simmons missed a shot. And if we regarded our own rebound, it goes back to 24. Now, and how it is actually right now in the NBA, it goes to 14. I'm sure you all knew that, but just in case. Uh, and a couple of rebrands there as well. Uh, draft lottery time. I don't think I traded for any picks or know that we have any picks in this lottery. So let's just go ahead and sim this real quick. Wizards, Cavs via Brooklyn. Not sure what that trade is. is it for? I don't know. I actually don't know. Uh, staff signing. Brett Brown just led us to a championship. That doesn't really look a ton like Brett Brown. I feel like he looks a little older, at least when he was their coach. But we'll keep him. It is what it is. I mean, he just won us a championship. It would be pretty idiotic to fire the guy. Uh, up to the draft right now. Do we have our own first? We do. It's at number 30. We also have 28 in round two. I don't think... I mean, this is the 2018 draft class, if you didn't know. I mean, this is Luca, Trey Young, Aiden. I mean, this is an incredible draft class. 
I just oh jeez, Shea and Brunson. Oh my, this is an insane draft class that does not get talked about enough. Um, if I were to make a move here, I don't know what I would do. I'd want to find a way to maybe get up to one and get Luka Doncic. I think that would be awesome. I just. I just don't know if it's possible. But you know what? I'll try just because there's so many good players in this draft class. Why the hell wouldn't I try? I mean, who won the draft lottery? It was the Wizards. Wow. Imagine Luka in a Wizards jersey. All right, we'll see if we can find a trade. So the Wizards have one, and the Cavs had two because they had that pick from Brooklyn. Neither of them have a single dollar in cap space, but the Atlanta Hawks hold the third overall pick, and they do have a little bit of cap space. And this is an incredible draft class. And Ricky Rubio was great for me, but honestly, I... I do get a little concerned, not because of his age necessarily, but because I think there's somebody out there that we can get that's going to progress a lot more. So Rubio was incredible for us, and I don't necessarily have to trade him. But if anybody in the starting five is going to go, well, first of all, it's probably J.J. Redick, but he's expired, and I can't trade him. And I just don't think this is necessarily the worst thing in the world. We also kept Terrence Ross for a situation kind of exactly like this. And how about if I just go ahead and give you number 30, and I'll also give you 28. You interested? Wow, they agree with that. All right, so... Now I'm starting to wonder, would it be possible to maybe move up to number one? Now I'm going to try, because I know the Wizards have the first overall pick. They want Robert, oh my God, 100%. Uh, yep. Which means we're getting Luka Doncic. We're also get Marcin Gortat, who was a problem at once. Once upon a time, Marcin Gortat was the biggest pain in the ass. I Trust me, I watched my Celtics play against him in the playoffs. It was so annoying. We're going to send Roko, the third overall pick, and a future first in 2021 over to Washington for number one, Marcin Gortat, which means we are going to be getting a generational player here in Luka Doncic. Now, there's obviously a ton of incredible players here, and honestly, whoever I got at three, it's not like it would have been a bad pick, but Luka Doncic just completely clears all these guys. He is incredible, and I am super excited to have him here. I mean, you have Luka, Simmons, Tatum, and Beat. I mean, oh my God. The man's an 83 overall as well. Absolutely insane. Now, he's listed as a small forward. Where do I want to play him? I have no idea. We'll figure out whatever the rest of the team looks like where he fits in here. He'll definitely be in the starting five. TLC not getting that qualifying offer. We take a look at free agency right now. Oh my God, what a free agency. This is when Kevin Durant went to Brooklyn, I believe. I don't think I'm off at all. Obviously, we don't have... Oh, wait. We actually have a little bit of money. We have $20 million here. I mean... Hang on a minute. Do I do I take a flyer? I mean, do I have $4 million to clear up anyway? I mean, I have Marcin Gortat. You know what? Because all these guys are on such cheap contracts right now. Hang on a minute. Oh, my God. Do I just create the greatest a team ever assembled no way right no way KD signs with another team like this right oh my god we're gonna get Kevin Durant oh my god I actually cannot believe that that just happened I can't I'm actually like mind blown uh TLC is gonna go we're not gonna have enough room to keep any of these guys but I don't care Kevin Durant is officially a Philadelphia 76er this starting lineup is going to look very, very interesting. I mean, just look at this. This is just insane. All right. So what I'm thinking off the top of my head right now, this, this, I don't know how it's going to work. I might go back and play Simmons at the one. I might play Katie at the four, have Luca at the two, keep Tatum at the three and have him beat obviously start at the five. Does that make sense? I feel like that probably makes the most sense. Uh, also, my computer just fucked up, but hang with me. I'm going to reset all these positions. Jesus Christ. So we've moved the positions around the way I think it makes the most sense. I mean, the only other scenario I could think of would be playing maybe Tatum at the two, have Simmons at the three, and play Luke at the one. But honestly, I don't really think it's going to matter. This is just mind-blowing. I actually cannot believe it. And we also have Fournier coming off the bench. I mean... I cannot believe we were able to make this team. Uh, we are going to move Korkmaz at this point. I don't really think he's going to be needed here. I just too low of an overall, honestly. Um, first round pick from the Bulls, that's fine by me. All right, so in terms of backups, we do need to find ourselves a backup small forward and a backup power forward. And honestly, I don't mean, I don't love having McConnell as a 75 overall. Also, same with Rashawn Holmes. But this starting five, it's just too good. Oh my God, do I bring in Dwayne Wade? How do we have money right now? Um, Sure, I'll take a flyer on Norman Powell. I mean, who else is here? Power forward-wise, Rudy Gay's here. You know what? No, no, I'm not going to get Rudy Gay. I'm good with Norman Powell. I, I mean, this team's obviously insane. Oh, my God, it's going to let me bring back J.J. Redick, who is 34, which definitely makes me a little bit nervous. But why the hell not at this point? Um, okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to probably... 
Would I just prefer to trade JJ Redick for a power forward? I mean, it makes it would be cool to keep JJ on this team, but honestly, Fournier is just ten years younger. I can't really explain that one logically. Bobby Portis, backup power forward. Honestly, why the hell not? Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, I'll take Kuzma. Holy shit! This is. I don't really have words for what this is. This is insanity. I'll see you guys at the start of year two. I don't really have words for what this team is. We're fresh off a championship and we somehow, like, I don't even know. They just, woof, insane. Uh, it's going to be Ben Simmons, Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, and Joel Embiid. Bench, Evan Fournier, Kyle Kuzma, Norman Powell, Rashawn Holmes, and TJ McConnell. I don't know. I actually, I don't have words. I actually legitimately do not have words for how good this team is. We're going to three-peat. I don't have any doubt. We finish out year 268 and 14. Joel Embiid gets that MVP just a little bit earlier in this version of NBA history. Incredible season. Luka wins MVP, MVP, Rookie of the Year for us. Oh, my God. Andre Roberson, Sixth Man of the Year. That is a name I have not heard in a minute. I feel because he had an injury, I think, that kind of changed the course of his career because he was a tremendous defensive player, just really couldn't shoot very well. Uh, Kawhi Defensive Player of the Year in this scenario, still in uh, San Antonio, because I believe at this point in time he would technically be in Toronto by this point. Uh, Kevon Looney Most Improved and Brett Brown Coach of the Year at 68 wins. I mean, hell, this is just mind-boggling. I can't even believe that there was like 14 times that this team didn't win. This is just... Absolutely insane. Uh, here's a full look at the numbers. Feel free to pause if you want to. It it doesn't matter. Uh, rebounds right now, Joel Embiid, and assists is Ben Simmons. All right, we have the Detroit Pistons here in round one. Norris Cole, Justin Holiday, Doug McDermott, Blake Griffin here, Andre Drummond. I remember this era of Pistons basketball. I'm very happy they decided to move away from Blake and Andre, and they decided to blow it up and tank. Because now you have an incredible young core. And, uh, yeah, this team's not touching us. All right, Milwaukee here in round two. Eric Bledsoe, Malcolm Brogdon, Chris Middleton, obviously. Giannis is still here. Clint Capella is a new addition that never actually happened. But this is a this is a challenge. This is definitely a tough second-round matchup right now. And it's, uh, well, maybe not. Okay. Toronto here in the Eastern Conference Finals. Lowry and DeRozan was one of my favorite duos to watch. You have a young OG Ananobi here as well. Serge Ibaka, Valanciunas. You have Fred Van Vliet, Yaka Pertl, Siakam off the bench. Wow. That team is just insane, man. I mean, I, I wish DeMar got a ring. I really do. Uh, we're 2-2 with them right now. We go up 3-2, and we close them out in 6. And we will be taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have Jimmy Butler, who I believe, if my memory serves me correctly this season, was in Philadelphia at this time, correct? I believe this was the season he ended up playing there. They have Jeff Teague, Tyus Jones. They have Wiggins starting at the four towns. They have Tyson Chandler, Taj Gibson, Trevor Ariza off the bench. This is fun, man. This was such a fun era of basketball. It really was. It was just different. Life was different, man. Uh, Joel Embiid, finals MVP. I know Simmons won it last year. Embiid gets it this year. Hell, we need to win a third. I, I really do. Um, all right, player retirement. See if there's anybody different. Tony Parker calls it a career. He ends up finishing it out in Utah. Dwayne Wade finishes his career in Orlando. Ariza Montiel. Oh, good God. All right, staff retirements. Eh, I don't care. Hall of Fame, Dwayne Wade. Obviously, you're telling me Tony Parker's not a Hall of Famer? Yeah, come on, 2K. That's that's fucking that's a violation right there. Uh, okay, so coach's challenge comes in in the All Star game at three quarters. Oh yeah, I know they did that. Top four picks done via weighted. Random no. Um, no, just keep the lottery. Right? I'm not losing my mind. That's incorrect, right? Four worst team. Yes, that makes sense. Heater changing the uniforms. The Rockets are wow. Everybody is. That's it's cool to see. All right, so draft lottery time. We're not gonna have anything. Oh my god, we do. I lied. What? Um, no, no, that Clippers pick went right back to them. Okay, I, I honestly, I don't think we really needed it anyways. We're good with Brett Brown. Uh, this is the 2019 draft class right here. We'll just take a look. I'm sure you all know Zion Morant. I mean, uh, Eric Pascal, he was somebody I wish kind of worked out a little more in the NBA. But obviously, you know, Zion, John Morant, this is a good draft class. But, um, yeah, we're not, we're not going to – I don't think we have any other picks unless I miss something this year. Yeah, we have one – yeah, no. Um, you know what? I'll hop in. I just want to see if there's anybody that's like a known name that's not like a random person with the last pick in the draft. Didi Lozada is a, is a known name. Allen's here. Allen Smalajic. Well, Smalajic. I don't fucking know. Um, so there's some players here that aren't... Compl oh, my God. Fuck yes. Caleb Martin. Torched my Celtics. He deserved to get picked like that. All right, cool. Welcome. He's a 70 overall. Why the hell not? He ended up working out decently in real life. Uh, Embiid, Simmons, Tatum, and Kuzma all coming back on team options. Oh, my God. Qualifying Rashawn Holmes, CJ McConnell. I'll qualify them both. Honestly, I wouldn't mind finding an upgrade at one of, if not both of those positions. But 
I, I definitely want to bring them both back. All right, find something. Okay, so we have no money, obviously. We're not going to go out and sign. This is another fun free agency class, but it's just not going to happen. Uh, Tyreek Evans. Wow, that's a name I have not heard in a minute. You get Spencer Dinwiddie here. Probably an upgrade at this point over TJ McConnell. He's not progressing unbelievably well. You got J.R. Smith. I love J.R. Um, and then the center spot, if Tyson Chandler wasn't 35, I'd consider it. Larry Sanders, that's another name I haven't heard in a minute. But you know what? I think my pick, honestly, here, of, or pick my signing here is going to be Spencer Dinwiddie. I think it's a good one to bring in. He seems like a very valuable backup point guard. I think, again, at this point in time, I would take him over TJ McConnell. He's not progressing as well. And then, oh, shit, I have to renounce Sean Holmes. All right, that's fine. I can find a backup center, or I can sign somebody and trade for a new backup center. It's not the end of the world. And then um, I can, like, still sign J.R. Smith if I wanted to. Tyson Chandler is just going to, he's going to regress pretty hard. And I know he is, which is, it's going to be the tricky part of this. Ugh. Festus Azili's here. So you know what? No, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little cheesy thing. I'm going to sign J.R. Smith and then I'm going to trade J.R. Smith. Cause we still have a couple picks remaining. So why the hell not? I mean, J.R. Smith's a fun player. I just, I don't really need him on this team. I need a center or a backup center anyways, a lot more. So we have a couple first round picks here. We'll include in the trade. Uh, we're bringing a young Mo Bamba here. Patrick Beverly also included in that trade. Wendell Carter Jr., why the hell not? He's only 20 is what it is. All right, cool. So we are, majority of this core is running it back. This team's obviously crazy insane. We would win a, we will win a third championship. I'll see you guys at the start of year three. It's year three, and at this point in time, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I mean, we, we should be well on our way to a third trade championship. Uh, it's Ben Simmons, Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, and Joel Embiid. Honestly, if you look at it from just like the outside perspective, obviously out of the five here starters, Ben Simmons' career obviously did not go as well as the rest of them here. But if everything hypothetically had gone perfect and everybody had maximized their potential, you probably have five Hall of Famers here. Hell, you probably have four anyways. You have a guaranteed one in Kevin Durant. I think Embiid's 100% in the Hall of Fame at this point. I'm assuming if Tatum and Doncic's careers play out the way we probably think they will, They'll both end up in the Hall of Fame. And then, obviously, Simmons kind of sucks. But, hey, man, he's the third highest overall on this team right now. Uh, the bench is great. It's Evan Fournier, Kyle Kuzma, Wendell Carter Jr., Norman Powell, and Spence Dinwiddie. I'm not playing the bench nearly as many minutes as I typically do just because, again, look at this starting lineup. I, I can't really afford to take minutes away from anybody. So, it's insane. I'll see you guys at the end of the third year. It is back-to-back -back MVPs for us here in Philadelphia this year. It is Ben Simmons' time. He averages 19 points, nearly 9 rebounds, 10.5 assists. You love to see it. Uh... Also, yeah, we broke the best record in NBA history. The Warriors went 73 and 9. You can swap the 9 and the 3. We went 79 and 3. It's, it's fucking insane. Uh, John Morant is your MVP. Ended up being a Los Angeles Clipper. He went third overall. So Zion, I'm assuming, went one. I wonder who went two. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr., sixth man of the year. Kawhi Leonard, defensive player of the year. He signed with Minnesota. Interesting. Trey Lyles, most improved. What the hell? And then Brett Brown at 79. <laughs> oh my god i just i honestly don't have any words i mean there there's just absolutely nothing also is lebron still here he is there, there is absolutely nothing that can describe what has happened to this team it's absolutely insane uh here's a look at the numbers i mean ben simmons was our third leading scorer and was the mvp i wonder if that's ever happened if any of you basketball junkies out there has an has a guy ever won mvp while being the third leading scorer on his team i honestly doubt it i just it sounds like something that would be impossible but who knows uh, maybe back in like 1952 or something. Uh, it's Chris Dunn, Matisse Thibel, Paul George is the Chicago Bull. Larry Marketing is still here. Okay, interesting. Again, good team. We just nothing's really beating us. James Harden signed and paired up with Giannis. Wow, that is pretty insane to see. You still have Eric Blood. So you got Tony Snell in here, Nerlens Noel. I always wish Nerlens Noel career worked out a little bit better. That's crazy. And then Charlotte, her, okay. There's just no way with a team with Sam Decker and Cody Zeller's hairline is beating us. I just refuse to believe it. Sweep. And then Minnesota here, who, okay, so they lost Jimmy Butler, but they've added Kawhi Leonard. Tyus Jones and Jeff Teague in the backcourt. They have Wiggins starting at the four steal and Cat still at the five. Good, but not nearly good enough. We didn't lose a single game in that final playoff run. Absolutely insane. Ben Simmons wins another finals MVP. So Simmons ends the video with two finals MVP and a regular season MVP. And Bede got a regular season MVP and a finals MVP. And this was a rebuild about Jason Tatum. Wow. Absolutely insane. This is very well could be one of my greatest teams I've ever constructed, obviously. This rebuild was about Jason Tatum. And I feel like, honestly, we kind of created a team where he couldn't really maximize his full potential, which kind of does suck. But 
end of the day, we still built a hell of a squad, and I had a ton of fun doing this rebuild. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, leave a like down below. That would obviously be awesome. As always, if you guys have any of these other fun what-if scenarios, let me know down below in the comment section. I'm not going to lie. I kind of really enjoy the ones that are like kind of more recent NBA. Like This is obviously, what, six, seven years back. I don't mind going back to like the one I did the other day with Kobe, but like I just kind of enjoy these more from like, I don't know, 2013 on. If you guys have any, let me know, but I'll do them all, obviously. But uh, yeah, man, hell of a team, super fun video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one.